answer from yesterday. I'm just going to write this down real quick. So we did measure of an arc yesterday, and this can be really confusing, but the measure of an arc is different than the length of an arc. So here is a lovely central angle. So we started talking about that yesterday. So central angle just has this vertex on the center of the lovely circle, which in that picture is the letter D. If you have a central angle, it actually can break the circle into two different arcs. A major arc is more than halfway around the circle, so more than 180. A minor arc, which is what I'm going to focus on here, is any arc that is between 0 and 180. So this would be, AB would be what we would call a minor arc there. Okay, now the measure of an arc is in degrees. So measure of an arc is in degrees. All right, now the measure of the arc, I'm going to write M for measure of the arc, is equal to M for measure of the central angle that cuts it off. Okay, so that angle, ADB, cuts off that arc that I did in yellow. So angle, or sorry, that's a D. Angle ADB, they tell us in the picture, is 88 degrees. The measure of the arc from A to B, which we just put like a little curve over the top to indicate the arc, the measure of the arc is the same as the central angle. So that's also 88 degrees. Now the measure of the arc, like I said, is different than the length of an arc. So the length of an arc is going to be like in like centimeters, inches, units, something like that. It's not in degrees, it is not an angle measurement. A length of an arc is the actual length of this curved segment. Okay, now this is really weird, but I hope this formula will make sense to you guys as we get going on here. So I use just a capital L to represent the length of the arc. So the length of the arc is part of the circumference. So all the way around the circumference would be a length. I don't have a label for the radius here or anything, so I don't know what units this is in. But all the way around the circle would be the circumference, right? I don't want the whole circumference. I just want the measure, or that. I just want the length of that little arc that I highlighted in yellow. So the way you do that, I'm gonna make a little fraction. I'm gonna write measure of the arc divided by 360. For the little picture there, we would just want 88 degrees out of the whole 360 degree circle. So just 88 out of 360. And then to get the length, it's part of the circumference. So what you would actually do is multiply that by the formula for the circumference of a circle, which is just 2 pi times the radius. So we talked about that yesterday. So the only two things you need to find the length of an arc is the measure, which would be the degrees, and the radius, and then your golden. We're just going to type everything into the calculator. So in this little picture here, I don't have a radius, but just, just as an example, like how would I set it up for this particular arc? You would just have 88 out of 360. That would literally give you like a percentage as that fraction appears in front of this. And when you multiply that by the circumference, it gives you that percent of the circumference. I don't want the whole circumference. I just want 88 degrees of the whole circle. So that's why we set up that little fraction. So here's all you have to do. You have to get two things. You have to get measure of the arc, and then you have to get the radius. So this is also maybe a little hard to see. They want you to find the length of the arc that's just like a little bit darker around the circle. So I'm just gonna kind of use my highlighter to highlight it here. Okay, so tell me radius of that circle. Can you tell from the picture, what's the radius of the circle? 17. All right, now, what is the measure of the arc that we wanna find the length of? Measure's gonna be in degrees. The 255. You have those two pieces of information. You are golden. I'm just going to plug it into this formula that I wrote right up here. So the length of my arc. Okay, I don't want the whole circumference. I only want 255 degrees out of the whole circle, which is always 360. So that little fraction will always be your measure of your arc over the whole circle, 360. And then times 2 
pi is not a variable. Remember, it's just a little button on your calculator. And then in for the radius, I'm going to plug 17. So I'm literally just going to type this entire thing into my calculator. So just grab your calculator, graphing, scientific, whatever you got. You should do 255, divide by 360, times 2, times find your pi button. If anybody needs help finding it, let me know. If you're borrowing a graphing calculator, you're not familiar with it, you have to hit second and then the little button that's right above the division key. If you guys have a scientific calculator, most of them just actually have a pi button. So you don't have to do a second function or anything. Is there a glare? So like this one, I would do 255 divided by 360 times 2 times my pi button. My pi button on this calculator is just the fourth button down right here. And then I'm going to multiply both of those by 17, which is the radius. Hit enter. And you should see they'll give you exactly the same answer. So whichever calculator you're working with, it doesn't matter. And the questions are going to be similar to yesterday, where they're going to say, hey, let's round it to the nearest 10. So, okay, I've got 75 point what? What would you say for this one to round to the nearest 10? 0.7. Perfect. Now, this is a bad first example. No, it's not. My radius does have a label on it. So it says 17 mi, that stands for miles. So the length of that arc would be 75.7 .7 miles. So this would be like a huge circular thing outside. Is anybody having a question? The only difference between this question and the question right next to this is the question right next to this does not give you a picture and it does not give you the radius. So you gotta find two things to find arc length. You need the radius, which if they tell me the diameter is 41, how can I use that information to find the radius? So maybe Divide by two. Now, this is not the greatest because it's not a nice number. It's got a decimal, but that's okay. Sometimes the numbers are weird. So 41 divided by two should be 20.5. That's my radius. And then the measure of my arc, they give that to me. This one is a major arc. It's got three letters that would indicate that to me. The other thing that would indicate it's a major arc, it's just got to be bigger than 180, but less than 360. So 188 is bigger than 180, but we don't really need all that. We just need the measure of that. And then I'm just plugging it into the lovely formula and we're going to round to the nearest 10. So the arc length. So I know I don't have a picture here, but I want 188 degrees out of the total 360 for the circumference part that I want. So just for the arc length. So we're just going to do that percentage and then our circumference would be 2 pi times the radius. That's why we had to cut the diameter in half. So it's 2 pi times 20 and a half. And again, you literally can just type this entire thing right into your calculator. Whoops. So I'm going to do 188 divide by 360 times 2 times your pi button times that 20 and a half. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Forgive, I just wrote 20.8 as I did that. So it's not what I just had on the screen. There we go. So I got, let's see, 67 point, what would you round that to, to the nearest tenth? Three. Three. Awesome. Now, this guy, it said the diameter was 41 inches, so that means your arc length would also be in the same units, which is just inches. We're not doing area here. We're just typing this lovely stuff into the calculator. Is anybody having a question? Okay, now, the two problems below here are identical, but they're going to ask you just a little bit different way to write your answer. So this says leave your answer in terms of pi. So just want to practice with you what that means. It's just one less button that you're going to push on the calculator. So here is the arc that I'm going to find the length of. So you can see the radius in the problem, right, is 14. What is the measure of the arc in this diagram? Measure of the arc. Perfect, perfect. 90 degrees. Okay. The measure is always in degrees. The length is actually a length of part of around the circumference. All right, so all you're going to do, measure of your arc, which is 90 over 360, times 2 pi times your radius, which is 14. Now, here's what I'm going to type in the lovely calculator if I want to leave this in terms of pi. I'm basically going to use all the numbers and not the pi. So here's what I'm going to, I'm just going to literally write down what I'm going to type. I'm going to do 90 divided by 360 times 2 times the 14. 
and then that's what I'm going to type in my calculator, and then I'll just write the pi next to it when I'm done. You're not actually going to type pi into this when you do this on the calculator to leave it in terms of pi. If you leave it in terms of pi, that gives you an exact answer. So we're going to do 90, just divide by 360, times 2, times 14, which I know all of that just, I don't know if you guys can see that very well up there. Let me move that. The That just gives me literally the number 7. So I'm going to write, this is 7, and you just put the pi next to it. That's what we call an exact answer because it's in terms of pi. I didn't round anything. So that arc length would be exactly 7 pi, and then this would be in kilometers if we needed to write that down. So the only difference, if you're going to leave it in terms of pi, you're just not going to multiply by pi in the calculator. So the question next to this is not giving us a picture. Um, gives me the measure of my arc, which is 180. If my diameter is 12, what is my radius? Six. Then you're golden. We're just going to plug this into the calculator. So we're going to do arc length, measure of your arc, which is 180 for this question, 360. So that would be exactly half the circumference. So 180 out of 360 is half the circle. So 2 pi times my radius, which is 6. Now, if you got to leave it in terms of pi, I'm just going to literally write what I'm going to type into the calculator. I'm going to do 180 divided by 360 times 2 times 6. And then when you get all done doing that, just write pi next to your answer. And that'll leave it as an exact value in terms of pi. So 180 divided by 360 times 2 times 6. Oh my goodness, forgive. I can't push buttons on the calculator properly today times 2 times 6. Oh my gosh, I fired. 180 divided by 360. It should be a nice number. All right, this is just 6 when you do this. If you did it correctly and didn't screw up 6 times like I just did. So this should be 6 pi. And then the diameter was in inches, so the label here would be in inches. Is anybody having a question about arc length in terms of pi or to the nearest tenth? Okay, now this is still dealing with arc length at the bottom. This is a work backwards problem. So don't write this because you've got this all over the paper, but I'm going to use the arc length formula to solve this question. So this is what we've been doing. It's just a that fraction gives you a percentage of the circumference to give you the arc length. The question here actually gives you the length of the arc. So it tells me that that's 15 pi. It says, what's the radius? So we don't know the radius of the circle. If we do know the arc measure though, so the measure of my arc here, it says in the directions is 270. So I'm just gonna sub all that information into that general formula for arc length. The main difference is the radius we don't know, so that'll actually be a variable there. So the arc length, I'm just gonna write 15 pi. I know the measure of the arc is supposed to be 270. So it's 270 always over 360 because it's over a total circle times two pi. And I'm just gonna put r because we're gonna solve for the radius. Now I know this looks really weird, but you gotta remember pi is not a variable. The only variable I have in there is r. So we're just gonna solve this for r. This is kind of similar to some of the questions we did yesterday, if you guys remember doing this. Do you see how there's a pi on both sides of this equation? I don't have any adding or subtracting. What I'm gonna do here just real quick, I'm gonna divide both sides by pi. And that's just going to get rid of that on both sides. You don't have to deal with that. So that's why it's really nice if we have the arc length written in terms of pi because we can just cancel that pi out. All right, here's what I have. I have 15 equals 270 divided by 360 times 2 times my radius now. All right, here's what you're going to do. Just on your calculator, I'm going to simplify this 270 divided by 360 and I'm just gonna go ahead and multiply that by two. All that's being multiplied by the R. So I'm just kind of simplifying the numbers out front. So I did 270 divided by 360 times two. All that, and it's just a decimal here, is 1.5, but I still, I'm not on the screen, forgive. Um, and now I have a glare, um, and now I still have a glare. Um, anyway, but that's multiplied by the radius. So then all you have to do is just take and divide by 1.5, like that. And then you'll be done. And that'll give you the radius there. 
So it's kind of a work backwards. I'm doing 15 divided by 1.5. The radius for this circle has to be 10. So if it gives you the arc length, it's just trying to get you to use that formula and kind of work backwards from there. Any of the questions that you guys should have, the pies should cancel out to make it a little bit easier to work with. Is anybody having a question? Okay. Now, the whole back of this is not arc length. This is sector area. So this will be an area formula. It's very similar to what we did on the front. And I'm just going to shade this in on a couple of these because, again, it's kind of didn't come out great on my copy here. Okay, so here's the sector. That little piece I just colored with my yellow highlighter, that is a sector. So a sector has to be cut off by two radii. So like a radius here, A to O, radius here from O to B, and then the intercepted arc. So the arc that gets cut off by that angle would be that arc AB around there that goes around the sector. So the inside of that, that's the area that we're gonna find that's called a sector. So like think if, if you had a piece of pizza or a piece of pie or a piece of cake or something like that, that's the sector, the whole part on the inside that's surrounded by those two radii and then that little piece of the circumference, that arc. So if you wanna find a sector area, this is super similar to what we did on the front. So I'm gonna use A for area. It's the measure of whatever the arc is that's cut off by those two radii over 360, just like we did on the front. The difference here is I want part of the area instead of part of the circumference. So the part of the area I want is whatever the measure of that arc is. You're just gonna switch this up to be the area formula for a circle, so pi r squared. If you do pi r squared, it gives you the area of the whole circle. If you multiply it by that fraction in front, it just gives you that much or that percentage of the area. That's all you have to do. So this question underneath here is extremely tricky. You need two things, just like I told you on the front. You need a radius and you need the measure of the arc for the sector that you're gonna look for the area of. So if I look at this example here, can you tell me from the picture what the radius of the circle is? Five. Okay, now this is this is super tricky. Okay, what is the measure of the arc for the sector that I want? It's not 68. If I want to find the area of that shaded piece, what would the measure of that arc be? Or does anybody know how I could figure it out? Would you know? Exactly. So like right here, this is a diameter, right? It goes all the way across. This is exactly half of a circle. So half of a circle is 180. So just, just do 180 minus 68. So just if you do 180 minus 68, is it 112? Okay, 112. So the 112 would be the measure of that central angle, which then also is the same as the measure of that arc. So just be careful. I, I feel like this question or something similar picture will come up if people just use the 68, but you just gotta do one extra step here because you actually want the area of the shaded part, not where that 68 is at. So the measure of the arc is that 112. All right, now all you have to do, I'm just using this formula right here. So out of the whole 360 degree circle, I want 112 degrees of that area. So 112 out of 360, that just gives me that percentage of the area, pi times the radius, which is five, and then we're gonna square that. So we're just gonna just type it right into your calculator, just right on in the whole thing. I could do, why do I have such a glare going on over here? Okay, 112 divide by 360 times find your pi button and then times five squared or you could put in 25 however you want to do it and then if it's asking you to the nearest tenth that just means one decimal place so this would be 24 point what 0.4 all right the next number is a three so we would round that down the only difference between this and the question on the front, if you're talking about an area, it's in square inches, square meters, square miles, whatever. This is a terrible example because I didn't label the radius with any units. So I'm just going to say units squared. But if it had centimeters or something like that, we could just write centimeters squared. But anytime you're talking about an area, that um, label is whatever the units are and then they're squared because you're talking about all the area, not just around the edge. Now, if you got to do in terms of pi, 
Same thing. Okay, you got to grab the measure of the arc. This guy's got a 72 out of the whole 360 degree circle times, oh my goodness, sorry, I started to write the circumference, pi times my radius squared, which for this question is 15. If you got to leave it in terms of pi, I'm just going to write out exactly what I'm going to type into the calculator. I'm going to do 72 divide by 360 times 15 squared. And then we'll just write pi next to it. Just don't, if you got to leave it in terms of pi, that means I want to see a pi in the answer. So 72 divided by 360 times 15 squared. And a lot of the times this will be a nice number. So that's great. Um, I ended up with 45. So my answer here for this sector area would be 45 pi. This would be centimeters squared here for this one. In terms of pi just means don't type the pi into the calculator, just write it next to your answer. It's called an exact answer because we didn't round anything. All right, now I've got one more and then we'll just practice a couple that go backwards. So my radius here, I can see that's 18 centimeters. This is tricky. So I want to find the area of this part that's shaded here. Can anybody tell me the measure of that arc? Because they don't tell you in the picture. What would the measure of that arc there be? I've got a measure here. I'm going to go around the edge here. This arc would be a major arc. The major of this arc is 300. But I want this one that I kind of shaded in yellow. Does anybody know what the measure of that arc would be? 60. And if you're like, what the heck? Like, how'd you figure that out? Exactly. You guys know all the way around the circles 360. So if you just subtract, the rest of this here is labeled as being 300. So if you just subtract that, the leftover is 60. So that's the measure of the arc. Once you have that, you're good to go. We're just going to plug it into the formula. So I want 60 out of the total 360 degrees of the circle. And then you just do times your pi times your radius, which is 18 squared. Now, all I'm gonna do in my lovely calculator, let me just write out exactly what I'm gonna type. I'm gonna write 60 divided by 360 times 18 squared. That's what I'm gonna type in the calculator and we'll just write a pi next to it to get our final answer there. All right, so I'm gonna do 60 divided by 360 and then times 18 squared, which is just 54. So this is 54 pi as an exact answer. That label was um, centimeters, so the area of that sector would be centimeters squared. Is anybody, it's not terrible. Is anybody having a question? Okay, now this one is a little bit different than the previous question that we did backwards, but I'm going to do this a backwards question. It's going to give you the sector area and we're going to find either the radius in one of these questions or we're going to find the arc length in the other question. So that's just the formula we've been working with on the page so I could have it displayed for you guys. So this says the area of the sector of the circle is 16 pi. So I know A in this formula and it says if the radius of the circle is 8. So I also know the radius of the circle is 8 centimeters. What's the measure of the arc? So measure of the arc, I'm not going to know here. Let me let, just so I don't have to write out measure of the arc, I'm going to let that be x in this little formula that I'm going to put together for you guys here. So I'm just using this. I know the area is 16 pi. I don't know the measure of the arc, so I'm just going to make that a variable by just putting an x. Measure my arc out of 360, and then times I times my radius, which they did tell me is 8 squared. Okay, do you guys see how there's a pi on both sides? Everything's being multiplied. I don't see any adding or subtracting signs. This one here on either side, they're going to cancel each other out. So this is going to be 16. And I'm going to write, this is x over 360 times 8. What's 8 squared? Does anybody know? 8 squared? 64. 
here's maybe what I would do just to make this a teeny bit easier to work with. So if I multiply that fraction by 64, you can always multiply fractions. You don't need a common denominator. Just kind of think of that 64 as being over 1. So all I'm doing here, I'm just going to do on the top of that fraction x times the 64. So I'm going to write 64x out of 360. That might just make it a little bit easier to solve. So I'm going to try to get x alone. That's going to be the measure of my arc. If you had 16 equals 64x over 360, how would you get x by itself? Like what would there we got to do two steps here. What would be maybe the next step that would help me get x alone in that little equation? We got 16 equals 64 times my variable I'm looking for divide by 360. What could I get rid of there? Will we divide by something, multiply by something? What do you think? Yeah, get just get yeah, get rid of this 360. We'll get that out of the denominator. You're dividing, so we're just gonna multiply. All right, so whatever 16 times 360 is, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, I need like a huge number. So 5760. All right. So I have 5760, but now all I have left on this other side is just 64 times x. So then I'm just going to leave this right on my calculator screen. I'm just going to end up dividing that by 64 to get my answer. So divide by 64 and you get your angle measure and your measure of your arc there. So this is 90 degrees. So it's using that formula and kind of working backwards. We're trying to give it to you guys in terms of pi so that way the pi's cancel out. You don't have to mess around with that. All right, now the other question right here is similar, but it's going to ask you for the radius instead of the arc. All right, so it says the area of the sector, so area in that formula is 200 pi inches squared, exact answer in terms of pi. If the measure of the arc, which they give us here, is 180, we don't know the radius. What's the radius? So I'm going to work the problem the same way. We're just going to plug in the information a little differently, and we're not going to know the radius this time. So my area is going to be that 200 pi. Measure of the arc will have 180 over 360 pi times my radius squared. Okay, super similar to the last question. The pi's on either side there are just going to cancel out. You have one on either side. If you divide both sides by pi, it'll go away, so you don't have to mess around with that. Does anybody know what 180 divided by 360 is? Your, your 0.5, yeah. The, so 180 over 360 is exactly half of a circle. So a half or if you want to just do 0.5 radius squared. Okay, I'm going to do two steps. We're going to get rid of the 0 0.5. I'm just going to divide both sides by a half. Now, this always messes people up, but I want you to think about this for a second. I always like to use money. If I took $200 and I divided it into how many 50 cents? We're in $200. Just think about that for a second. So you have $200. I'm going to divide that into how many 50 cents I would have there. It's actually going to give you a bigger number. So there would be 400 sets of 50 cents, if that makes sense. Because a lot of times I think people get tripped up when they divide by uh, a decimal and they kind of don't think about it. If you think about it in terms of money, that might make more sense. So this is going to end up being 400 equals my radius squared. Now, all you have to do here, which is a little different than the last question, it's the radius squared. So to cancel the square, we're just going to take square root. So I'm just going to do square root of 400, and that will be our lovely radius, which, excellent, it's a nice number, which is 20. Is anybody having a question?